Chris Herron is a former NBA basketball player. He's been drug and alcohol free since August of 2008 and has refocused his life, putting his sobriety above all else. He recently teamed up with the Mariches in the Know Community Coalition and spoke on behalf of the Summit Behavioral Health Care Company to share his story at a local high school. Because of my background, I believe that opens the door for me to get in front of kids. It is then up to me to be relatable, and, and it's up to me to get kids to trust um, in the message, understand where it comes from. Um, and I think when I walk out of speaking in front of kids, they don't even remember Boston Celtics. They don't even remember the NBA. I think what they remember is that I understand what struggle is and I have empathy for what they're struggling with. I think that's what's key to kids. One of the reasons why we chose Chris Heron is so that a high profile person like Chris can have a lot of influence over the choices that children make. Um, they view him as a hero, they view him as a role model, and so it's very important for him to share his experience as far as what led him down the road to making the choices that brought him to addiction, and then of course we want him to share his message of recovery and treatment. Uh, the event uh, came about today because we are fortunate um, to have Chris Heron as an executive partner of Summit Behavioral Health, and we'd like to bring him to Suffolk County to help raise awareness and education for the community. You know, what was it like being in the NBA? It was a uh, it was a challenge. Um, it was a dream. Uh, unfortunately for me, I was battling substance abuse when, when I finally was able to, to reach that dream. Um, so I wasn't able to sustain it. Sports, we think, is such a common denominator. Um, and if you look at the world of sports, there are so many icons and so many of our youth look up to sports figures. So to see somebody like Chris Heron, who has had a relatively successful career and then all of a sudden has derailed himself through substance abuse and now is back on the road to recovery is a really powerful connector, um, I think, to students and something that they can relate to. We want to, with Mariches in the Know, raise awareness within the school to promote prevention for drug abuse and then, of course, treatment for those who are suffering greatly. It doesn't discriminate. Addiction can touch anybody. You know, I grew up a Celtics fan. I grew up wanting to be a Celtic, and, and, uh, and when I finally became one, I, I was struggling mightily with OxyContin. Chris is important um, as a presence uh, because of his background. Op it opens doors. Um, you know, his story is really no different from a lot of people that suffered from addiction, but having the NBA experience, uh, ears open up, um, especially with the youth. He resonates very loudly with the youth of our country. I think sub substance abuse for me uh, began like it does for most. I think it starts off with a couple of beers at 14 years old, um, scared, uh, don't get caught, not scared. Um, smoke a little pot at 14 thinking that's where it begins and ends and, um, and it kept going. You know, at 18 years old, I was playing big time college basketball in the Big East. I, I tried one line of cocaine and it took 14 years to walk away from it. A lot of our students here in our community are athletes. Probably about 60% of our high school population participates in sports in some way. And so it's a very important aspect of their life. And, and I think that's really where the connector is. Uh, and he's somebody that, that they can look up to and respect and, and really admire the struggles that he's gone through that they may be going through themselves right now. Um, and, you know, it's a way for them to know that there is a way out. Uh, you know, at 22, playing for the Celtics, I became dependent on 1,600 milligrams of OxyContin a day. Uh, it's $25,000 a month drug habit. Um, that wasn't the intention when I opened those first couple of beers when I was 14. Prevention is a very important aspect in the fight of, against uh, alcohol or addiction in general, alcohol abuse, uh, drug abuse, uh, because we often know the end game when people have hit bottom, um, a tragic accident. We, we don't educate everyone when it starts with that one drink. You know, I started this four and a half years ago, five years ago, and um, I started this with the intention to try to inspire people struggling like me. And my passion turned into prevention because I look into the eyes of kids who 
who want it, but they don't know how to get it. They want to prevent, but they don't know how to. And, and I think it's extremely um, important for us to get out in front of these kids and start teaching them different. I hope that today's attendees will see that um, there is hope out there. That if you're somebody who's struggling with substance abuse, here's a, an example of someone who was a success. Their substance abuse affected their career. Um, they've had to now come through recovery. And now they are having a productive life in a totally different way on the other side. And so I think hope is a, a big message today. My memories of, of, of the MBA um, are much better today at six and a half years sober than, than they were when I was uh, struggling in substance abuse. You know, I'm grateful. I'm grateful for the opportunity to play and, and it's also given me a voice on this topic. One of the things that we would like to have today's attendees walk away with is more knowledge about prevention and that prevention does work. I believe people will walk away from Chris's speech today with um, an awareness and knowledge that addiction does touch everybody. Um, however, recovery is possible. Um, there's always hope. Uh, he's been in recovery now for six plus years and you can always turn your life around. I just hope people walk away with a new thirst and a drive and, and empathy um, towards people who are struggling. Should there already be someone suffering from addiction that there is hope, there is recovery, and treatment does work? I think the other aspect of it too is that we hope that anybody who's struggling with substance abuse or who maybe knows somebody who's struggling, um, that they're going to feel more free to speak out about it and to reach out for help. There are resources in our community and we're hoping that you know, they will see that and that they'll pick up the phone, make that phone call or ask a friend and try to get um, some connection so that, that they themselves or whoever they know who's struggling with abuse can get some assistance. You know, one of the things I'm most proud of is that for the last six and a half years I haven't had to change myself. And, and I don't care who you are, that's a battle. Um, trust me, there's been many days I'd like to take a time out, uh, make a pit stop. But for six and a half years, I haven't had to. And, and I take great pride in that. I take great pride in that for the last six and a half years, I've been the same person, um, not influenced or affected by any substances. And, and that's, there's something to be said for that. Um, and, and I'm proud of that. And I think more people in recovery need to stand up and say that, that, you know, we're fighting the fight and, and it's not easy, um, but it's something to be proud of.